Today we're editing one of your images because you guys are winners. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNA. So today we're editing one of your guys' images because we had a contest last week and someone won it and that's what we said we'll do and we're doing it. Congratulations to Chris Neal who won the contest. Guys, thanks so much for everyone who entered. The contest, basically how it works, you guys submit an image in the con comments. There's gonna be one this week too. So if you didn't win, not a big deal. Enter it this week and there's a chance every single week. So basically how it works is these images are like the the whole point of this contest is to like take your guys images to the next level and edit them so submit images that you want to see edited or like wow i wonder what Aaron would do with this um and then people are going to vote on what they want so it's up to you guys also to make sure everyone comes in from facebook and twitter and all that stuff to come vote on your images give them a bunch of likes and then you guys are going to win so chris wins a flurn pro and this could be you guys next week. So that's what we're editing today and uh, we're just going to get started. I'm really excited about this image. We're going to go for it and um, at the end I'm going to announce this week's contest. So there's a contest every week happening on Monday, Monday to Monday. That's just how it goes. All right, let's do this. So this is Chris's image. Uh, it's of his daughter. It's really cool. Um, it's on one of those like merry-go-rounds. I'm guessing the camera was either like uh, clamped to the merry-go-round or maybe he's just a a badass at holding things and he was just holding the camera um, and took the picture of the, his daughter while it was spinning. So if you guys are curious on how uh, this type of image is done, um, basically you want to use kind of a slow shutter speed unless this is going like extremely fast. So I'm, look, I'm probably thinking 30th of a second, 15th of a second. Chris can comment on that below and I'd really like that Chris if you did it. But um, use a relatively sl slow shutter speed so the background is going to be blurry but things are, that are in the same place aren't going to be blurry because they're, you know, they're solid in the same place, things are moving. It's like, you know, a, a photo where people are moving, walking by the camera, they might be a little blurry, but like a couch, it's not going to be, it stays in the same place. So that's how you guys would, are gonna do something like this. All right, now today, what I wanna do is, I wanna make an edit that's like appropriate for this image. And I'm thinking like, kind of like a, a lifestyle-y, maybe like kind of Instagram where we play with some colors and do some fun things and um, just make the image overall look really cool. So the first thing I want to do, um, we're going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to do a lot with like curves and colors and things like that. Um, I'm going to grab a hue saturation. I'm going to click on this little colorize button, which just basically just makes the entire image the same color. Um, and what I want to do here is just kind of choose the color that I think would work for a nice background color. And to me, this image kind of says like warm, you know, summery. Um, so I want to stick to like reds and yellows and like greens and uh, oranges and things like that. I want to stay away from, you know, colors like blue too much um, because it's, uh, it's going to make it a little bit colder. So that's kind of like the why behind why we're doing this. All right, so we're going to do that. I clicked on that colorize button. We're going to lower this opacity so it's not, you know, so uh, in your face. But it's going to kind of like bring a lot of the colors together um, to kind of like start off our transformation. Okay, I wanna do a couple of cool things. We're just gonna start off with the craziness here. Um, I'm gonna grab some colors here. Uh, let's just grab a bright pink color and choose a nice large brush. And I'm just gonna paint like over here uh, towards the edges. And this is gonna give it kind of like that light leak look. Um, light lead look, say that 10 times fast. Uh, we're gonna change this blending mode from normal down to like color dodge. Um, and it doesn't have to be pink, it can be whatever color. If you guys don't like the color, not a big deal. Uh, you can hit Command U, and then you can just click and drag the slider, and you can see like as it drags, it's just gonna change the colors a little bit there. Yeah, I like that color, whatever it just wound up being. Okay, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a blur because I want it to look more natural. So you can go to Filter, we can go to Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. Okay, and then the more blur I give it, you can see like the more it's just gonna fade out with everything. Okay, so kind of a cool like light leak effect there. Um, and that's the whole idea with this image. It's gonna be like bright and lights coming everywhere. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is kinda take care of, I'm gonna do the same thing on the upper side of this image actually. Um, again, I'll start off with a, this pink color. Um, usually it doesn't really matter what color you start off with when you're doing this sort of thing because you can always change it, just hit Command U. Um, we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna change this to color dodge. It's a little bit too um, vivid, like it's, it, there's too much there. So I'm just gonna lower the opacity, okay? And then we're gonna hit Command U and then change our hue 
to something that works a little bit better. All right, just to like bring in some more color there. And I'm gonna grab my eraser tool. There we go. And just kind of erase it away from someone here. Because I, I kind of want it to look like, you know, that's the area of the, the sun and the light and the things like that. All right, that's looking great. So we've got that going on. The next thing I want to do, I want to actually bring in a lens flare. Um, so I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to hit shift, delete, and fill this with black. Okay, we're going to go to filter. I'm going to go to render, wherever it is. There we go. And down to lens flare. And we're just going to do that in the top corner and kind of bring the brightness up. There we go. And hit OK. So this is our lens flare. Now, um, working with like blending modes and things like that, you can anything that's black you can make invisible using a blending mode of screen. That's right, you said it. Good job. Screen. We're going to go to screen, and the black disappears, leaving just the light. Now, the reason I like doing this uh, in this way is because now, if you want to, you can you can move your lens flare. Like you can rotate it around, you can transform it, you can do whatever you want to. Uh, you can blur it. You can do all kinds of things, and you'll have a lot more control over your lens flare. Like I like to give them a little bit of blur. So let's go to a blur and then, you know, they just look a little bit more natural to me when you do blur them a little bit. Um, and then we'll go to, you know, uh, our layer mask and kind of like, I'll just layer mask a little areas so it's not like so in your face. All right, there we go. That's looking good. Cool. Now I'm going to add another detail here. Um, I want to play with my darks a little bit. So I'm going to grab a color that's like a light brown and uh, hit Option Delete. It's going to fill with my foreground color, which is that color. And we're going to change this from normal to lighten. What this does is it takes anything that's darker than this color and just turns it into this color. Um, if it's so visible like that, it's not really going to look that good. Uh, so I'm just going to make that about 20 or 30% visible. Um, it's just going to give our darks a little bit of a color. Uh, I'm going to go to curves or levels. You can use either one. I'm going to grab a color, couple color channels and kind of color my highlights a little bit. And uh, I'm going to do so by dragging my blue channel. I'm going to make that a little bit yellow. And then I'm going to put, put a little bit of blues there in my shadows. All right. There we go. And you can see it's kind of like high, coloring the highlights, um, the highlighted areas yellow and coloring the other places. Uh, blue in the shadows. Um, and I like that overall, although I don't like it so much on her face. So you can do this, uh, you can take care of that in a couple different ways. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. You could just layer mask that out, but I generally don't like that. If I'm doing something like, uh, you know, coloring in a whole image, I don't want to layer mask something out because it, it generally kind of like, it's like, why did you color half of the image? Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to recolor the part of the image where the sunlight is, and that's going to make it look like the, the actual light is causing the color change, not just like some random decision I made. OK, so if it's a little bit too much yellow, grab a curves layer, go to your blue channel, and just pump up your blue until it looks a little bit better. There we go. So we're just kind of undoing what we just did, um, but not a huge deal. Now I'm going to paint with, uh, I hit Command I to invert the layer mask. I'm going to paint with white. Now, there we go, like kind of around our, our subject there. All right. To get a mix that I think looks a little bit more natural. And you can kind of play with your opacity here. We just don't want her skin, you know, her, her face and everything to be so blue. So we still have the effect, right? You can still see it overall. It looks good. It's just, you know, right there, like on her face and things like that. Um, it's not as apparent. It, it's, you know, it's a little bit less. Um, there we go. Let's go to our curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go to RGB, kind of drag this down. This is going to be for the corners here. Um, I like that. So we're going to grab a marquee tool, make a selection, hit Command I for the layer mask and then put a Gaussian blur. And that's going to give us a bit of a vignette. And you can, like, with this sort of thing, guys, it, it's not calculated. This is not like skin retouching or something where it's got to be, like, you know, perfect tones and, you know, all that. Um, literally, it's just kind of like adding these really nice effects that we liked. Um, and what I'll do, like you can see here, I'm kind of like turning some of these layers off and on. Like, you don't have to 
commit, right? Like, that's why we use layers, is so you can change your mind at any time, which I like to do. Um, like, if I'm like here on the lens flare, and I'm like, you know what, maybe a little bit lens flare, maybe we'll just move it up. Um, you can do that, like it's, that's why you, use, why you use layers. So don't think that everything that I do, like every piece of, you know, Photoshop I lay down is law or is gonna not change. Cause it's just like, you know, you want to be able to change it. Uh, Cause you're gonna keep building with the image and everything's gonna change. All right, well that's, I think looking really cool so far. Um, I wanna bring a couple colors up. Um, so I'm gonna grab a hue saturation. There we go. And now we're gonna click on where it says master here. Um, I'm gonna click on like our yellows. And to make sure I grab the right color, I'm gonna grab my little eyedropper there and click right here. And what that's gonna do, you can kind of see this little slider here. Um, you can see that slider move around in the different areas that I uh, choose to drag on my image. So if I'm over here, it's basically gonna affect this area here. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna bring up the saturation of that area. And it's gonna, you know, feather out. It's gonna bring up some other colors as well. But that's, that's gonna be the primary color it's gonna bring up. And um, yeah, I think that helps just breathe a little bit of life into the image. Don't wanna bring up too much saturation, so I'm gonna lower that down a little bit more. All right, now we're gonna do some cool things. Um, I'm gonna make a stamp visible, shift option command E, and I'm gonna put another blur on this. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, and I'm gonna do a motion blur. We're just gonna go even more, because I want to. Because <laughs> I want to, that's the only reason, I promise. Um, and there we go. I just did a motion blur, uh, zero degrees, just going left to right. Now I'm gonna put a layer mask on that and hit command I on my layer mask. Um, and then we'll just paint this visible in some areas, like where I want a little bit less focus on the areas. There we go. Maybe just a little bit like on the, on the edge of the bar and stuff like that. But we wanna avoid our subject. So again, not a huge change there, but just like blurring the background even more. And then I'm gonna make another stamp, another stamp visible I'm gonna desaturate it, shift command U to do that. And uh, then we're going to go change this from normal to like soft light. And I'm gonna go to filter. We're gonna go to other and then I'm gonna go to high pass. There we go. And I'll put a layer mask. You know, we could go a little bit more with that. So we'll change that to overlay. I wanna put a layer mask on that, invert my layer mask and then paint with white over our subject. So what we're doing is kind of like blurring the background and uh, this high pass filter, what this does, I'll just zoom in. You can see I work kind of zoomed out. Um, the reason is I want to look at the image as a whole. I don't really care about individual details. That's for like skin retouching and stuff like that. But when you want to work on an image as a whole, you kind of do want to be zoomed out. Um, this is just kind of sharpening the area where our subject is. So that's, we got blurring of the background and sharpening of the subject, which is all going to help you kind of like zoom in focus exactly on the subject, which is exactly what we want. All right, let's shift click all of those layers and uh, group them together. So here's our before, and not that there's nothing wrong with the image before, but this is a Photoshop uh, company where we do Photoshop, so <laughs> I wasn't just gonna leave it. Um, and then there's the after. So it's just a kind of a different look overall in the whole thing. And if it's a little too yellow, like I think it's still a little bit too yellow, what I'm gonna do is just grab a curves. I'm gonna grab my blue channel, grab a color there and just pump up the blues just a bit. And that's just gonna show up in those highlights. There we go. Because you, you don't want to look like people have like weird colored skin. Uh, you can, you know, color an image, but if their skin is just like out of the human skin range, then it's gonna look weird. So I pumped a little blue into that. I think it looks a little bit more natural now. So. That's it. Oh, you know what? One last thing. I'm gonna hit shift backspace, fill this with 50% gray. We're gonna go to filter, noise, and we're gonna add some noise. I'm gonna change this from normal to soft light and then change my um, opacity to about 30%. So a little bit of noise on this kind of image makes it all come together. I love it. So that's it, guys. This is our image for the day. And uh, Chris, I hope you guys like it. Let's just make that invisible and then Back visible again. Hope everyone likes it. And uh, we have a new contest. So here's the contest this week. You guys are gonna submit your entries below. Just click 
submit my image. And uh, the contest for this week, the theme is black and white. So I want you guys to submit your best black and white images that you want entered. And again, get all your friends and everyone to vote for it because next Monday we're choosing a winner. I'm going to edit that image and that person's going to win a Flurn Pro. So guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. Enter the contest. Let everyone you know, your dog and your mom and your cousin, to vote for you. I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone. You my dog. Vote for me. <laughs>